Welcome back to Let's Play Metroid Prime. Two Echoes. Last video, or the last episode, um, I made a blunder. Um, I was incorrect in, a, in the time in which you fight a optional boss. Um, so we'll be coming back to here when we come back to check on the ship um, after we head to the next area. That's the thing. Um, additionally, we went through some scans because it wasn't there and I couldn't figure out what the problem was. Because I was getting. The, I had the, the time incorrect. There's some enemies here now. Where are they? There's some really big dots on the radar. I believe I scanned you. Yeah, I scanned him. He's a key bearer. He's important. He's a very important to the plot. And some more green crillies. I still like the sound they make when they die. It's a little. I don't know what it, what it is about it. It's just interesting. By the way, before you go down there, blow that up. A really missile expansion. I believe this is which one? This is our this is our first missile expansion in the entire game. So that's exciting. Also, yeah, it's, you can hit that and it acts like it's hit. I believe playing this Prince. Boo noted there was a certain point at which it went through it. Well, that's a pretty far distance. I would assume that that doesn't hit. Yeah. Anyway. It's an interesting thing. What's this? Ooh, some lore. Anyway, in the meantime, we're going to scan this, because this is the elevator system. Egg on waste, blah blah blah. Yeah. Again, fastest elevator ever, and we um, enter Egg on waste. Before you go through that door, though, Agon Bearer Pod. Basically, it's a crate. Except it's a live. Living crate. And yet another thing to scan in here is the Lumite. Um, a photosynthetic flying insectoid. I believe this is the beginning of its logbook entry, so I'm going to ignore that. Uh, relatively harmless, although that's not entirely true. Target's been dead for. And then we have some sand grass. Sandgrass, indigenous strain of grass adapted to desert climate. These might get a little bit more annoying later. I believe they go invisible in the light. Either that, that, and they can, I believe, a fire their laser. Au revoir. And so, yeah. There's actually a save room relatively near here, but we're not going to end off the episode just yet. Probably wait a little bit before we do that. Um, that is a puzzle that we're going to do later. Those three dot things, those are related to a puzzle. Believe it or not. It's going to be quite an interesting one, actually. And anyway, we're also going to encounter another new enemy here. That's right. Sandigger. It's desert-based tunneling bioform. Ow. And it has two heads. Gotta kill both of them. Apparently just one charge beam to either head will kill will kill the two-headed beast. Anyway, this is a missile door, but we've scanned it, we've scanned it. And just head through here, and here's a save station. No, 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 no. Well, not that. There we go. Sand bats, small airborne predator pack. With that out of the way, we can save here. We won't be headed through that tunnel, although we can do that. Um, the way there is eventually blocked off. Somewhat unfortunately. So, you know what? I think another re thing I disliked about the power suit from the previous game is I just noticed this. I think Samus's shoulder pad things are a lot smaller in this game. I, don't, I hadn't really noticed that before anyway. Got another sand digger here, so, uh, yeah. That's a thing. Oh god. It's not dead yet. What is this? 
second one have like a ton less health or something? What the? Well, I mean, this is just like the others, I guess. Huh. Huh. Interesting. Well, then I guess they're not all the same. That appears to be the situation. Anyway, moving on. Um, get some bear pods here to recover some missiles because, unless I'm mistaken, yep, this here is made of, I think brimstone was the thing that breaks it. By the way, some more sand bats here. Get a better look at them. They're basically just wings. I tried making one in spore once before, and I literally just made it like a mouth, a tiniest body ever, and then like a wing. Which, because it's spore, means two wings. Anyway, they're not too big a damage unless or they're not, they don't. They're not too sand bats are not too dangerous, um, but I do believe recoil damage is a thing. Or recoil damage, recoil is a thing. So, you know, and I can never be too safe. I don't. I think I jumped too soon there. Yeah. Enemies like this are like that are um a little bit common in this game. I still much prefer them to the annoying. This room is really dark on this television. It's probably not as dark for you guys. We're gonna need to bomb that to get up there, but it is an energy tank. So I was curious. And uh, yeah, this room is a thing. <gasps> I think it's a space pirate. That looks yep, yeah. yep. That that looks like space pirates. By looks like, I mean sounds like, because space pirates make that sound make the. That, that pirate theme. Yep, Space Pirate Trooper. Star Firing Brigade. Brigand. Space Pirates have suffered a serious defeat on Talon 4, yet they remain a powerful force for crime and disorder in the galaxy. Their technology continues to advance. Even the lowly trooper has received numerous upgrades to his arsenal. A photonic power scythe and quantum assault cannon are now standard issue weapons for all troopers. That's right, Space Pirates are still in this game, as they are in every Metroid game. That's not true. The second Metro game had no space parts. But every other Metro game ever since has had space parts. That's a new enemy. This is a Brizgy. Then Miss Insectoid. You know what? I'm just going to read the entire scan. Screw we're doing at the end of the recording session. Um, the Brig the Brizgy's tail ends with a venomous barb which conceals underneath a hard packed layer of fused sand. A series of sharpened ridges along its body discourages most predators. Those foolish enough to harass the Brig Brizgy are quickly introduced to its deadly sting. Yeah, so break that and boom. And then it drops nothing because it's a jerk. Now, anyway, I believe we want to go this way. Still missiles. We can't go that way. However, we can head this way. Thank God for splash damage. And it still didn't drop any missiles. How annoying. Anyway, this door is important, so we're going to head through here. Oh, by the way, I believe we can... Can scan part one of these trees, and it is actually a thing. These, by the way, are somewhat familiar to people who watched my last playthrough and/or saw or saw played Metroid Prime. These are shriek bats, territorial fighting rodents. Are bats rodents? I don't know. I should check that. I don't think so, because vampire bats are a thing, and vampire bats have teeth structures very different from rodents. Almost the opposite, in fact. Um. Fly, rapid fly explosive enemies. Target and eliminate enemy at range if possible. So yeah, this is a Shriek Bat. They look really weird in this game. Like, look at that body. They're like horseshoe shaped. That's barely a body. Uh, shriek Bats have high internal temperatures, leading them to seek cool climates to dwell in. They prefer caverns roosting on ceilings while hunting for small prey. Fiercely territorial, they dive bomb anything that wanders near. This attack is fatal for the Shriek Bat as the impact sets off a discharge of thermal energy. Yeah, they're 
not the most difficult enemy to defeat. We make our way through here, and that looks like it's a really important room, so let's head over there. What the crap? What have we here? Alpha Sandiger. Knows a pattern. Alpha Sandiger, large crawling bioform. Extremely well armored, target exposed eyes to damage this creature. It appears to be a Sandiger pack leader. Larger and stronger than normal members of its kind. Hold on a second. Target both ends of its heads. Sorry about that. To damage it. Excuse me for a moment. I have to get adjusted. I had to move a cable out of the way because that was making it somewhat difficult to read a thing. Oh, whoops. What's this? Oh no. Oh no. It looks a little different than normal possess. Than I, I would think a normal possess one looks like. That's right, folks. Meet the bomb guardian. Morphology: bomb guardian, bomb dropping darkling. Enemy is utilizing your morph ball bomb unit. Although its armor is strong, its tail is exposed when moving. Its mouth can be hit when glowing. This darkling sand digger has absorbed the ability to generate morph ball bombs. It can throw bombs with considerable accuracy and frequently lays a spread of bombs in its wake. Its head and tail are the only vulnerable spots on its body. Target them when they are vulnerable to neutralize and terminate this enemy. Okay, I want to see if... Is this a scannable thing? I don't think it is. Yeah, no. Oh god. Stay away from me. Unfortunately, I'm, uh, I'm getting a little bit low in missiles. I am apparently missing this. I'm having the same problem that Prince Boo is having in his LP. Apparently, I'm having it. Oh no, I hit a wall. But this boss is not that difficult. I can kill it in one more hit. If you know it would stop doing that. So apparently after halfway after you, it's halfway defeated, you have to hit it twice. And that's the end of that. Goodbye, Bomb Guardian. I barely knew thee. Thank goodness. And as you can see there. When you defeat a, a Darkling uh, that has possessed a thing, it dies and explodes and becomes a, a thing. Which can be easily recognized as the uh, Morph Ball Bomb uh, unit. Which turns a little disc center part of our Morph Ball blue, for some strange reason unbeknownst to me. But yeah, with that in hand... I'm going to turn up the volume a little bit, because I can barely hear that. With this in hand, we can do a thing. Namely, destroy these. I think maybe I turned up the volume a little bit too much, but whatever. I will deal with it. Who knows? Maybe it'll increase my volume. Um, so we get over here. You can scan this. It's not a logbook scan or anything. Sorry about that. But anyway, as I was saying, if you scan this, it should say... This is Luna Authentic Security Station. You have... Okay. Yeah, sorry about that interruption. As I have no doubt said or in a past project, I have a sister, and she likes to interrupt my projects because it bothers me, and it, therefore it's fun for her. Because she's a nice person. Like that. Boop.
and see, now I just can't get back into being comfortable. Well, kind of. Anyway, what you want to do here is you want to scan this thing. It's a hollow projector, and it's now online. Welcome, I am Isha, sentinel of the Agon Temple. This message survives my death as guidance to the to one who would fight the Ing. A portal to Dark Aether lies nearby. With it, you can travel to this land's shadow. I am the shadow, the true self. You must locate a dark temple, a twisted mockery of this sacred place. Inside, you will find the energy controller you seek. The temple door is held fast by three locks. The keys for the locks are hidden throughout that dark land. Your search will be difficult. Even the very air of the dark aether is dangerous and can cripple the strongest of warriors. In our past struggles with the Ing, we placed a series of light crystals throughout their world. They remain today. These crystals create a safe areas that will create safe areas that protect will protect you from the harmful atmosphere of the dark world. I have updated your translator module. You can access devices and doors coated with amber holograms. More lands are open to explore. When you have taken the energy from the Dark Temple, return here at once. May the Light of Aether serve you well. Energy fully replenished! Hooray! So yeah, that guy's the thing, and he's updated our translator module, so now we can proceed doing a thing. There's also a thing in here, and by that I have of course mean a lore scan. There's lore scans I think I will read later because they're quite intensive, but creature scans, no. I'd say I can't wait for boost ball, but getting boost ball in this game... Well, if you haven't played this game, you should know that they're, um, the boss for boost ball is very infamous for certain reasons. Which I'm sure we'll see when we actually go there. Now, I believe there are war wasp hives in these areas, which I will now destroy because they're, they're currently trying to bother me. As I'm just trying to get out of their territory. Let me be! Here we have some more shriek bats, because they have, of course, respawned, because they are, of course, shriek bats, and are prone to such stupidity. Anyway, as we enter here, we know you can now see the um, thing that the Lumites do. As you can see they go invisible in light as thudding goes on in the background noises because I have family. Sand, sand, glorious sand, la 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 la. All the sand, all the sand. What's in this door? I forgot actually. I do not. I honestly cannot. Ro oh, this room. This room is not quite where we want to go. Where is it? Actually, to be perfectly honest, it might be where we want to go. We shall see. Anyway, go through here, and it, these are kinetic orb cannons, as you can tell. Uh, they'll fire us up here. We go down here, and they'll bring us over here. To a key bear. Key bear? No, I thought... Oh, uh, well, I'm wrong. Pretty sure there was a key bear in there, but I guess I was mistaken. Sorry about that. I thought I heard another interruption coming along. As you can see here, space pirate. And I believe what we should notice in a second is more space pirates are incoming. And oh no, the the beings of dark ether ether have appeared. 
Oh no, they're possessing the dark pirates. Yeah, dark enemies are not always a palette swap. Usually they are, but not always. As you can see, the case here is quite different. They do change a little bit. Anyway. Pirate troopers are already trained to follow orders without question. Or, pirate troopers already trained to follow orders without question were perfect candidates for ink possession. Darklings moved to take every trooper they could, expanding the army of the Horde considerably. Space pirate technology struck a chord with the Ing, who now hunt actively for gadgetry of any kind, especially weapon systems. You know, I honestly could have gone and get, gotten another energy tank at this point. Anyway, with that we're going to go through a bomb puzzle. Now, we already scanned the bomb slot, so we don't have to do so again. But as you can see here, we have this thing here. Where the scanning reveals that this is in fact a console used to energize and open a portal to Dark Aether and it is currently offline. Um, funnily enough, this is one of two such energizers in the entire game. Uh, we'll get into why that is in a second. Well, not in a second, but it'll be quite a while, I think, until we get to why that is. But there is a good reason for it. And I just fell. Like an idiot. Makes sense, because I am an idiot. After all, if I was not an idiot, why would I be making commentary on the internet? No one would like it if I was smart. If I was smart, I would not be able to do dumb things and be funny about it. Oh, shoot. Um, actually, we want to get out of here because there is a certain scan. Uh, actually, we can scan it later. See here, we'll go through there. Sand appears. And wasps are released from nowhere. Um, Later on, you'll see that there are hives there. Or hives spawn there later on. But right now, there isn't anything there, so it's a little curious as to why the there are wasp hives there. Unless that's one there. No, it's not. Anyway, this is not a mechanism, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but there are enemies in this room, of which are new and we have not encountered yet. And we can actually scan one from this distance. This is a pill bug. Um, which, oddly enough, is actually a real-life creature, sort of like, similar to the beetles from uh, Talon 4. This, of course, looks absolutely nothing like a real-world pill bug. Well, I mean, kind of. I mean, it does have more than the usual number of antenna, and it does have the little prong things that, uh, actually, pill bugs don't have those. Um, pill bugs have a cousin that do have those, they're called sow bugs, um, yeah. How many leg things they have? One, two, three. Or, yeah, not even close. Um, real pill bugs have seven pairs of legs, uh, two pairs of antenna, and I think they have eyes. So, yeah, very different from these Aetherian variety of, or from the Aetherian stream stream of pill bug. So yeah. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, break this, and that will come down again. Bring more war wasps out of nowhere. Seriously, where are they coming from? That's not what I meant to do. And it works, because it's not exactly hard to get back there. And we can fight these things without missiles, because we've done it before. Actually, no, we didn't. We got missiles primarily directly after... Or as soon as we got the, uh... Yes, that's not true at all. But whatever. Whatever. Anyway, this will probably take a little bit of a while. But... Nah, whatever. It's not like we... It's, I mean, it's not like... Quite clearly, we have to do this, like... Uh, I believe there's only three or four of these. This room looks pretty cool when it's done, though. Uh... So, yeah. This could probably end off the episode soon. If it's not already ended off already. Which probably isn't, because... Uh, anyway, pill bugs are annoying to kill in this game. Actually, I think they're annoying to kill. 
Oh yeah, they take two bombs to heal. That's kind of irritating, actually. Anyway, I believe this is the last of the greats, I think. Indeed it is! And so it's going to do this cool animation and go, I'm a fire and a laser, wah! See, this is cool. I w it's too bad that... Oh, also, another thing to note, although this is one of the two um, portal things that requires power, the other one is just in the middle of nowhere, so this is literally the only room in which, require, which we are required to power it. That's another interesting thing. I guess maybe they wanted to go with have like this mechanic and ended up changing the mechanic part way through the game development cycle sort of maybe possibly anyway um you'll notice by the way that gate over there um has a bomb slot next to it but the bomb slot it appears to be holographic um so if we'll scan this we'll find something interesting target is in a dimension state of dimensional flux unable to completely scan this bomb slot target 50 percent of its component atoms are in another dimension or on the surface of Dark Aether. Yeah, so whenever you see something like that, it means that you have to go to Dark Aether and interact with it on Dark, dark Aether, but it will interact with... Ooh, scan. Lore scan. You gotta scan more lore scans. Yeah. Uh, again, not 100% LP, just like the last one, but again, I will try my hardest. Now then, hopefully it will not cutscene us directly in, because we do kind of want to scan this. I get a feeling that we are going to get cutscene right in, though. Yep. Oh well. Nothing we can do. We can always scan it on our way back. Ah. Oddly enough, that doesn't change color if we get a suit with a different color. The flash that Samus, of, the flash of light that Samus becomes, does not change. Anyway, welcome to Dark Aether. That was a terrible voice crack, and I'm be well beyond the age of voice cracking. So, yeah, the very atmosphere is very acidic. Although, really, an, an acid, I'm pretty sure, only becomes acidic once it enters water and dissolves into some ions. Anyway, um, so we can scan around, maybe, sort of. No, we can't. Oh, we can scan these. This is a blade pod. A living storage of the Ing Horde. These Ing morph their bodies around... Anyway, these are technically creatures, so I'll go over them. These Ing morph their bodies around useful items to protect them. They rely on a larger ing for protections, and they have no way of fending off enemies. In other words, they're not really protecting anything at all. Damage from all weapons will harm them, but light-based weapons are superior. Well, that was an interesting piece of dialogue. Light-based weapons are superior. As you can see here, death. Um, some safe zones must be shot to function. Those are called, I believe, light beacons, but this is a light crystal. Um... So let's talk about this. Light crystals provide protection from dark aether's atmosphere. They can be nullified by dark energy and supercharged by light energy. They were created by the Luminoths during their war with the Aang, and s many still remain in use. Dark creatures despise light cr the crystals. Some are injured or killed by the field they create. Also something interesting that we'll get into later. These here are light beacons. New from Xenotech, rival of Xantech. Light beams must be energized by beam weapon. Light, light beams. Light beacons must be energized by beam weapon fire to function and remain charged for a limited time. The beacons were created when the Luminoth ran short of light crystals during the war. While simpler to make, the beacons were also unstable. They had to be energized periodically and could run out of energy at critical moments. Still, any protection was better than none for the Luminoth. That was weird. So yeah, um, let's go this way, because this way it heads to our save point, which is sort of where we want to go. We might come the other way on the way back, we might not, who knows. Okay, bombing that, we'll open that door here, but as you can see, it also opens the door on Light Aether. Yeah, transmissional activity detected. Ow, 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 ow. Meet 
A new enemy. It's about to shoot me. Inglet, worker drone of the Ing Horde. While crawling and morphing, Bioform strongly dislikes bright light. Inglets perform the menial labor of the Horde, but can be pressed into a combat role if there is need. They are amorphous blobs, capable of clinging to nearly any surface. Inglets can fire bursts of dark matter in self-defense. Isn't dark matter inv invisible? So they prefer to avoid battle. They seldom travel alone and can be dangerous in large numbers, sort of. As with all Ing... I thought the plural of Ings... Or if Ing was Ing, not Ings. Whatever. We're gonna, I'll debate this with my logbook later. They dislike bright light and will be avoid it if possible. There's a certain special case to which avoid them avoiding light is not necessarily true. Anyway, safe zones, if you haven't noticed, also recharge your health. So there are some cases in which it's actually safer to be here. Yeah, I thought there was one left. Yeah, you can't lock onto it and it won't show up on the radar if it's not um, a thing, but you can still shoot them when they're a puddle. Various types of inks also go into puddle mode as well, so keep that in mind. This way heads to the save room. And also some... I accidentally shot an ing. Lit. Anyway, over here... We have a save room. Oh yeah, and a new enemy that I'm going to scan in a second. But anyway, that'll have to wait till next time. So guys, this has been Binary for the Win here. Because Binary is just awesome, and I will see you guys in the next episode where we'll continue exploring Dark Aether.